Good evening, everyone. Today is April 4th, 2023. It is 630 and this is the Finance Committee meeting and I'd like to call this meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of America, one nation, under God, individual, and justice for all. This meeting is being held remotely in accordance with the Governor of Massachusetts March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GLC 30A, Section 20. On March 29, 2023, Governor Healy signed a supplemental 2023 budget bill allowing remote and hybrid meeting options for public bodies through March 31st, 2025. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Let me get my screen back to you. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's see. So thank you for coming. I, I, we did invite Steve Fors tonight. I'm not sure. Is, has he popped in this evening? Has anybody seen Steve? Okay. Um, okay, so tonight we have on our agenda to, um, we just received the 14th draft of the town warrant, and that now has all of the numbers in there. And so tonight we are going to be uh, doing our best we can to work through all of the warrant articles to make our recommendations on the warrant articles. I did invite Steve to come here this evening to do his annual uh, prep with us to, to uh, talk about town meeting and uh, check in with us. And I'm not sure he's here yet. So I was gonna turn the floor over to Steve first, but uh, we can just go ahead and move on. Um, so um, to bring everyone up to speed in the last 24 hours, um, there's been a lot of movement and activity on the warrant article, um, article six. And so I just want to quickly bring everyone up to speed on what's happened. Uh, yesterday, um, we received a, uh, a supplemental budget for the override from the school, school, uh, department that was forwarded to, uh, myself and Cindy yesterday, and um, then it was we had a a, a quick meeting at four o'clock yesterday to discuss that um, and talk through some of the things, <clears throat> and then the select board then last evening discussed it and then finalized the warrant and changed some numbers in Article Six, and uh, that's where we're at today. So. Um, so we're here to, to really understand all of that and bring everyone up to speed, and then we can have discussions on, on Article 6. Uh, what I would like to ask, uh, it's been 24 hours for me, and I am still trying to absorb everything that's happened. So I am, um, I'm going to ask to not do a vote on this article tonight. I think we all need some time to understand all of the ramifications and everything that's going on. And I think it would be really unfair to everyone here to uh, try to process this information quickly and do a vote. So I haven't processed it yet and I've had 24 hours. So I'm gonna, um, we'll go through all the rest of the Warren articles, but we'll, we should talk about this to, to come close enough to a vote, but I'd like us to settle and think about it overnight. I already see some hands raised, so I am going to um, I don't want to delete everyone again. So, Buzzy, I think you had your hand up. Uh, yes. So, uh, a couple of naive questions, right? We're not now talking about uh, the FY24 budget. We're talking about the proposed override budget. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So uh, it seems we've settled that um, the this, this school board, school committee, um, and um, the select board and we seem to be agreed 
uh, on the FY24 budget proposal at this point. Uh, what's happening now um, is some adjustments that have been asked for uh, by the school committee to the proposed override budget, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and as part of that, although you haven't mentioned it yet, um, there was some suggestion that um, those proposed increases uh, would make it more sensible uh, to ask for a more than $3 million override amount. Am I right about that? That was a discussion item um, that has not been um, voted on or resolved, but that, that was a discussion item. Um, yes. All right. And my understanding is that further, uh, the select board somehow or other found a way to provide at least some of those requested increases in the proposed override budget at the same time keeping the total amount of $3 million. Is that correct? That would be correct. That was incorrect or correct? No, that would be correct. That would be correct. All right. I have more, I, you know, I'd like to flavor that a little more, but I'll let you in, but I'm, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm trying just to get at the facts because mm -hmm. I, I have not yet seen um, the video recording of last night's meeting. I understand it's provoked at least emotion uh, in some people. There may have been some emotion displayed, uh, but I think it's important um, for us to just sort of figure out the facts first. Uh, so some, some sort of accommodations were made in what we had thought for some reason was an agreed upon override budget, is that correct? So I can give a little more flavor and I know Please. Jim here Still. and John yeah. is here, but so, you know, over the course of the last month or two, we had been talking about uh, the select board presentation had been a $3 million override and uh, bringing it in a million a year for three years. And we had talked about, you know, a number of options should, should you know, should, should it be the three million up front? Should it be all different things? But uh, the select board's proposal had been a million a year for each of the three years. And 54% um, was for the school, 46% for the town side, and then to, I think 250,000 to the stabilization fund. So that had been um what we had been discussing and, and that had been in the warrant up until up until yesterday i see and and that was based on what was there an agreement among um more or less uh the three bodies the finance committee the uh, select board and the school committee um some sort of commitment to that Uh, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, that with the, the the select board has been in front of us, and we haven't obviously voted on the override because it hasn't been presented to us yet. But we had been discussing it, and no one on the finance committee was in opposition with it. Um, so I, I I can't speak for the finance committee because we didn't vote on it. But um, there wasn't any opposition that was being made to it. And so, and the school committee, did we have any sense that uh, the school committee would be asking for this additional amount? I cannot speak for the school committee, but Nancy's here. So I'll, I, okay. Nancy, I think I saw Nancy. Did I see Nancy? I, yeah, I saw her. Yeah. I'm here. I'll let you answer that. I can't speak for, for the school committee. Thank you. Do you want me to respond? Yes, yes, absolutely. Hi, hi all. Um, the first time that the school committee, I know that Tom has been part of the meetings of the stabilization, uh, the um, proposition two and a half committee on Wednesdays, but the school committee as a body had not met. We did, um, it was a suggestion by FinCom for us to meet. We, we would, to tell you the truth, we just wrapped up our whole budget two weeks ago of getting in an accord with everybody else on the, on the same page. So just to let you know, it's not that for a lack of making an effort, we were finishing up the budget for FY24. 
And then um, Karen wanted a joint meeting, which was the one, that, the last one that we had. We did, um, we did do that meeting. We, in that meeting itself, I had not met with the committee at large because at that time there was no finality that I was aware of that this was gonna be the number and this was gonna be the distribution. I literally received the chart the day before that meeting and reviewed it, um, but hadn't been able to provide it to the body of the school committee because the, 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 you know when it came in. And I did make the comments at the last meeting um, with FinCom and the select board that the numbers and the way it was presented was not even sufficient enough to get us out of our present structural uh, structural deficit and to provide us anything um, in addition that it, it wouldn't meet even just maintaining what we have as it was proposed. So I was requested to go back to the school committee and find out just what they were looking for. And we did do a work session. Um, and then we came back immediately the following week with what we were looking to do. So I guess at the end of the day, if you really want to sum it up, if you just want to float the same ship, then you know the three million and how that's allocated um, has to be looked at. But that's what it is. I, I just if and we came up with a list of things that we think that the department needs. We think that it will be a savings um, with with the things that we provided um, that we were looking to do. It would be an ultimate savings in years to come. Uh, and those were and it wasn't million dollar. It wasn't a million dollars of need. It was pretty conservative of what we could do to make some changes. And that was just presented uh, just the other day to Karen, as she said, like they, you know, the select board just saw it as well. But I think collectively at the end of the day, we have to, we have to address the voters and we have to let them know what we're going to do. And the way that 3 million was first set out in the last meeting did, did not even meet our structural deficit and our needs to do the same of what we're doing. And, and so the numbers of that proposal would have needed to be changed. And I, and I had, um, and I think Karen acknowledged that she saw the same thing with the numbers of where our present budget is. So that was that, and, and here we are. And, and, and again, if the goal is to stabilize what we have and tell people it's not getting you any more, it's just keeping with what you have um, and you won't lose anything, but you're just gonna keep what you have and that's all there is. If we change around the 3 million as Jim had proposed, you know, um, yeah, it gets us there. I just wanna be very honest and upfront with the voters. You know, I, I don't want them thinking that, oh, we're gonna get this and what changes are we gonna see in the department because it doesn't bring us any. Can I ask another question for clarification? Sure. Sure. Um, so, uh, I mean, I clearly understand that um, you might not feel, um, excuse me, not you, uh, but the school committee may not feel uh, that the $3 million override as it was proposed would actually correct everything. Um, it might make some changes, but not correct everything. Um, and of course, it may be the town feels that way as well that it's compromising. Um, the question it seems to me to be asked um, is whether or not the adjustments that were made at the cost of um, some increase in uh, covering the operating budget of the other parts of the town, um, if that's still not going to meet your needs, but undermines the town's needs, then maybe what we do need is to propose a much more expensive override and make that an option. But why in the meantime are we making the town sacrifice further to the advantage of the schools in the meantime um, if both the town and the schools under the $3 million proposed override are suffering, but cooperating in that. Um, maybe that's what we've decided together or should decide together and then go for a larger override 
at the polls. If we were successful with a larger override at the polls, there would be nothing to stop us from having a special town meeting afterward uh, to come up with a $5 million override budget. But in the meantime, we have the budget on the warrant we have. I take it, although I wish Steve were here so that I could ask him about this, there's nothing to stop town meeting for making adjustments upward or downward so long as they don't violate some principle of having given fair notice uh, to people about what's going to be decided at town meeting. But if it's a $3 million budget that's going to be voted on at town meeting, maybe we vote on that, then at the polls, um, we give other options as well as the $3 million option. And if a larger option passes, we then have a special town meeting to come up with the budget. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, thank you, uh, Buzzy. Um, Hugh, you have your hand up, so go ahead. Thank you. I just say that I am open to the consideration of the higher override, five million or so, with some caution as to how ready the town would be for that politically, as far as an amount that would deal with a number of questions, fine. I just don't know if it's politically feasible. I am very much opposed to a raid by the schools of the share between the two sections. The 5446 came out of, I don't know where, but it's been that way for a long time. And the idea that the schools would take two thirds of the money at some time in the future, I think would guarantee the defeat of any override that you've heard, I'm sure everybody's heard me say periodically, there is a feeling I have heard on the town side, why do we bother with override? Because we're not gonna get anything from it. I really say it would be some for the town, but the perception, which is important sometimes is reality, that most of what's going to schools and we're not gonna get any, I think would defeat it. So we're back to square one, but I do consider, I would consider the increase in the raw amount as long as the allocation stays what it has been historically. I'd also point just in closing that everybody has been struggling on all sides. The, the police, fire, and so forth have made their operations fit the funds that they had. I'm not in a position to criticize what the town, the, the schools believe they need to do the appropriate job. But same thing being the case, in that case, Everybody else has made their operation fit to the available funds. Thank you, Hugh. Um, before we go to the next question, um, Jess, can you check? Am I listed as a host? Because I can't see everyone's hands being raised or the order that they're in. I'm somehow missing my. Um, yes, you are. I am. I'm missing my cue for some reason. So I apologize to everyone if. I'm going out of order because I don't have my order. <laughs> um, so I apologize. I think, I think I think Gary was next. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Gary, go ahead. So, you know, I go back to a comment that I made, I think in October before we started this process, that I don't think we're ready to pass this override. And now we're about how far away from town meeting? And we're still talking about, well, we don't know what the dollar amount is. To me, this is going to be a recipe for disaster. This is going to be something that's not going to pass. I can tell you right now because we don't know what the amount. We don't know what we need, and and I quite frankly don't know how we come up with three million dollars to begin with. I mean, is this something that we just pulled a number out of the sky? I mean, now we're saying we need five million, or is it four million? We're going to give now we're going to give sixty percent to the schools. I mean, this is all over the place, and in order for this to be successful, this is this is not the process to, to, to be going through. Can you imagine a resident? And I'm talking and I'm talking as a resident. I look at all these meetings, I you know, all the work that's been done. Now we say, oh well, we're gonna need more money. You know, it's only going to get us status quo. We're only going to be able to get swing by with what we need, what we have. To me, this is a failure at the right at the start. And I go back to the comment that we we need to put more time into this. And I get that there's been groups involved and I get that we've done a lot of work on this, but to be weeks away from town meeting and for us to still not know how much we need is a total 
disaster, in my opinion. You know, and we're doing a disjustice to the departments that we're looking to shift money from and say, okay, no, you know, we need, and not to say that schools don't need it because they do, but we're looking to shift money now from one side of the a ledger to the other side of the ledger. So, I mean, we, we talked about having the budget advisory group. We talked about having all these groups that could be working groups within us, you know, and, and maybe include some of the, some of the um, residents inv involved. We've gotten that. But for us to be now weeks away from town meeting and say, oh, we're not sure what the dollar amount should be. Oof, I don't know. That's not good. To me, that is not good. Thanks, Gary. Just one second, Shauna. So I just want to follow up on that, Gary. So I, you know, I share the same sentiment with that. Um, I'm in support of an override uh, in the town clearly needs it. There's no question there. Um, Absolutely. You know, but when we, we had been settling in on a $3 million number and in part, the heart of that was to, you know, to, to, to get enough money that made the town not quite whole, but save it from sinking, you know, save it from being a sinking ship, right? So just restore some of the positions, just get it back so it can operate. And that was the plan. And then the plan was we knew that, that those funds would not last forever, but it gives us time to develop a real five-year financial plan, really look at financial planning, really look to see what, what holes the town needs and how to best spend the money. To Within a 24-hour period for me to go up $2 million and, and not have more thought into that money, just I, I can't. I can't wrap my hand around feeling comfortable to just come up with a different number. Uh, although, you know, supported by additional detail that the school has supplied, but it's still a big change to what we've been talking about. And in a 24 hour period, I still can't get my hands around how I would feel comfortable supporting that without a lot more analysis for us to do. Yeah, we need, and, and that's a good point, Karen. I think we, we what the three million dollars would have done or would do is would give the, us breathing room to figure out can we build in financial flexibility into the budgets going forward. But to ask for, I mean, and there's people. I, I, I talked to a lot of people in town, and they, you know, they I think it would pass because they know the work that all the work that the committees have done. They know that there's residents now involved. So I think the three million dollars, even though it's a lot and it will affect the residents, is palatable. But my point is for us to be at the last minute saying, okay, now we need an extra $2 million. To me, that blows the whole thing out of the water, you know, and it, 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 there's no credibility now to, okay, what really is the number? Is it really 5 million or is it 9 million? We, you know, this is where we are. So right. I don't know. Thank you. So um, I think Shauna was next. So go ahead, Shauna. I apologize again if I somebody else was up. So um, I think you all know me, I'm the chair of the select board. So we had a, the select board had a proposal for a $1 million or $3 million override with 1 million per year. We had projected an amount that gave the town, the, you know, we had divided up the 1 million for the, the appropriation for the first year. So we, we had a plan, we had a placeholder for the school department um, budget. So we didn't find out until Monday. I'm not surprised the school department needed more. Certainly, you know, they expressed a lot of concern with the 405 or whatever it was we had in there before, but, but they gave us a better number with an itemized list of things that they needed yesterday. So, um, you know, we, we could have rejected it and said, sorry, we've been using this projected number all along. We don't really care what you want or we can present to the voters the number that the school committee said that they needed. And I know it happened quickly, but we had an obligation to close and finalize the warrant yesterday. So we didn't have the luxury of time to think about it. The question before us really was, do we keep our placeholder number or do we add, do we make it the school committee's number? So we put, we decided to put on the warrant an appropriation for the full $3 million 
we had the school department number. We added a police officer, a firefighter, and a grant writer on the town side. And I want to be really clear about people talking about the imbalance in the town and the school. We have a list of other positions that would be nice to cover. Jim had another million dollar list of town of positions on the town side, right? Uh, uh, if if we were to spend one million dollars to be in parity with what the school department is spending, we had a list of items that we could pick from. But some of them were kind of new proposals and things we had not really thought through yet. Um, it's pretty clear, pretty easy choice. We've been talking about uh, additional police and additional fire for a long time, so that was a pretty easy, you know, to pick those up pretty quickly. Grant Rider usually kind of ends up paying for itself. So we never said we didn't need more than that on the town side. We just thought we didn't have enough time in that one meeting to. Um, I figure out how do we okay if the school is getting a million how do we get you know a parity in parity on this town side so we didn't think that was the right thing to do so what we have now on the warrant is the revision that we just talked that Karen outlined and 1.3 million to the stabilization account and um, what we thought was prudent to do was to put the 1.3 for stabilization so this is the full three million dollar appropriation. And town meeting can decide, do we want to put that much in stabilization and have the appropriation? Or does town meeting want to not, you know, just don't not appropriate that money? So we did the best we could with the information that we had at the time. And, you know, we had a deadline we had to meet. So we had to make a quick decision. So instead of deciding to reject the school department request, we decided to put that in front of town meeting. So that's why we're not in parity anymore because we didn't want to just willy-nilly add stuff on the town side but we did we did add a couple more positions so that i think is the bottom of the, most of those questions thank you shauna um i think nancy you might have be next um thanks i i just don't appreciate the tone of we're rating the fund to fund the schools over the town, you know, it's got to stop. The people that have children in the school are taxpayers in the town too. They go to the dump, they need police and they need fire, just like everybody else. And then you have the folks that don't have kids in school at all, but they support the, the, the idea of community and contributing to a school system because it makes a town. And then there's another school of thought of the schools have too much and I don't have anything vested in the schools and I don't think as part of a community I need to put any more money in it. So there are different, different thoughts out there. So for every person that says I talk to people and they say, well, I talk to a lot of people and they say something different. This wasn't, if you looked at what was brought to us in the chart that I said that we just received as to what the breakdown would be, the town is gonna to be able to put some positions on that they haven't been able to fund. The schools can't even do that with this. With the proposal that was made, the original one, we're still chasing the free cap, the structural deficit that we have, and we're still cutting $270,000 worth of positions on top of that. So when we said, we didn't have an itemized list to present to anybody because the money that was being offered didn't even get us out and bring us to baseline. So that's why when we, you know, we looked at it, we said, this doesn't, we, we don't have a list to give you because the money, if you're going to allocate just the amount of money on the 54, uh, 46, then it doesn't get us out of the structural deficit that we have and get us back to baseline with the cuts that we make. So we don't have any positions to hire. So there is a difference because the town is actually going to be able to put on positions that they haven't been able to fill on their side of the ledger and the school's not. But I'm not trying to make it between the, the, the two, like this inner war of raiding funds. 54, 46 was done years and years ago for some reason because it worked. Times have changed, things have changed, mandates have changed on both the town and the school side. The complexity of it is different. We continue to do business, you know, a way that we just can't do business that way anymore. And we have and we have to change and we have to make the, the monetary changes that, that, that change. We can't continue to continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results on either side of the ledger. So all I have to say is that if you allocate the money the way that you originally had it and say, this is what we're going to do, then, the, you know, 
than from the people that have invested interest in the schools, whether it's community-based or because they have a, a kid in the school, it's gonna be whatever it is. This doesn't get us anything and we still have a hole to dig out of. And that that's the presentation. So I think the select board heard that. I think that they looked at the list, which was a very conservative list of things that we could do to save money in the future. Um, and, and yeah, they didn't have it until late at all, but we really haven't been part of this discussion other than this number of three million, wherever it came from, I think it came from the two and a half committee. It's, you know, I know our superintendent sat on that committee, but you know, the school committee wasn't, you know, an integral part of talking about that number. But again, we need money. The, the, the town needs a proposition two and a half. I think that we can all agree to that. I think everybody has, right? So at the end of the day, if the allocation has to be different, Hugh, then it has to be different because the needs are there now. I think that Jim did a, a, a plan, an alternative plan that I saw today. I talked to Jim about it. It makes some sense. It brings us back down to the 54, but it gets us out of the hole that we're in and allows us to, to bring a couple positions on that are necessary and including a grant writer. Grant writer is very important for both sides of the ledger, but wouldn't it be great to have a grant writer that wrote for the town as well as the schools? I mean, there are some of these positions that Gary's talked about before that should be combined between the two, two sides here. Um, so all I'm just saying is, is that whatever it is, it's gonna be, and people are gonna vote for it one way or another. But I hear from people in the schools and they're saying, well, if this doesn't even get us on the hole, out of the hole, like what's the point? So, so there, is, there, there is a lot of different conversation out there. And, and, and I just wanted to explain where we were. It's not because we were dragging our feet. It's not because you know we didn't come up, we pulled this out of a pie out of the sky because we didn't. Um, it is what it is, and, and that was the money that we were presented at the at the joint meeting, and we said it from then. I've said from the very beginning, I never thought $3 million was enough for an override, and I don't think that we should make a plan to come in and then figure it out and come back five years from now. I don't think voters want to hear that either. Whatever the plan is, is what we have to move forward with, and so we've made our proposal, and that, Thank that's you, Nancy. all I have. So just I just want to clarify, and, and I know I think Buzzy was next. Um, the original proposal by the select board, um, and Jim can quote me, I, I think it was 450,000 for the school in the first year, somewhere in that neighborhood. That would cover you for fiscal 24. So your current deficit on your fiscal 24 budget, because you, you we've provided a significant amount of free cash to cover most of your deficit for fiscal 24. So you had 280,000 still unfunded. So the year one of the override would have got you out of your hole. So the original proposal still would have would stand to to to, to take care of fiscal 24. It just doesn't, one, it doesn't it gets us out of the free cash hole, Karen, but it doesn't Well that's fiscal 25. Okay. So in fiscal 25 the plan was to increase the by another million and then more dollars would come in from the let from from the override that would then replace the need for free cash so that would get you out of that hole so that that was the design of that and and that would would work um buzzy i think you're next I thank think, you right thank you uh, so first of all i again i have a question i don't know who can answer it maybe steve i see that that um, he's now joined our our discussion, maybe Hugh. Uh, I know uh, that the annual budget for the next year uh, that is presented at town meeting is the one voted on by the finance committee. It's the job of the finance committee to come up with the budget proposal to town meeting. Now, town meeting afterward, can reject it, it can modify it and so forth. I wonder if we know whether it's also the proposed budget from the finance committee um, for an override. That also is the one um, that goes to town meeting to be voted on. Let's assume for a moment that it is and that it's our responsibility I hear a lot of things here for us to consider. Um, one of them is 
uh, and I must say it, it disturbs me a little bit uh, to hear that when a a higher budget, $3 million in the first year was being considered, that the town was not in a position to immediately know where that money would go if there was an increase to the town. I mean, we are basing the campaign, the education, the proposal for an override on a perceived need. And I'm wondering why it would take um, more than, well, I, I, I guess there was no time um, after uh, the proposal was made at last night's meeting, but there is time for us, the finance committee, uh, to hear from the town um, after it gives greater thought to the question of where it could use more money, the possibility of distributing uh, $3 million in the first year differently. And I'd like to propose that that's the way we should think of uh, the question um, before us. Thank you. Buzzy, could you clarify that when you're you're asking the finance committee to get information from the town? Do you we as far as I understand, we have the finance committee needs to make a recommendation on this article and it it it's by next week because the right. it has to go to print. So are you suggesting between now and next week we somehow get feedback from residents is that what you're suggesting yes i mean i think we can do a lot of discussion tonight we've got shauna here uh, i don't know whether jim's here or not um th maybe there's more thought that has been given to the question since last night uh certainly more thought could be given to it between um last night and next tuesday um yeah i mean i i would think um if we're talking about the fact that it's unfair to the town, unfair uh, overall to the citizens, um, not to give equal consideration to the town, uh, to ab abandon a, um, uh, a distribution um, algorithm we've used for many years, I think we should give some thought to that um, and realize that uh, the select board was caught um unawares a bit last night and if it's up to the finance committee to come up with the proposed override budget um then i think we need more information more opportunity to be given to the town um to talk about this and also to the school committee um, but i think this needs more consideration than apparently was given to it last night Thank you, Buzzy. And and just to reiterate, as I and when I started the meeting, I I mentioned that I don't want the finance. I'm not going to ask for a vote on this this evening. So we need uh, we need some more time to think through it. So uh, we will not be voting on this tonight. But thank you, um, Elise. I think you're next, so you have your hand up. I do. Thank you. Welcome. How, how is everybody tonight? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't be better, right? Well. <laughs> I just want to weigh in quickly about um, our group that has met for a year. Uh, there are 10 over a year now at this point. There were 10 of us, both from uh, the, the school side, the town side, private citizens, uh, bankers, businessmen, on and on and on, who have done deep dives into a variety of, oh, sorry, finance committee, of course. Uh, have done deep dives into a variety of issues. The $3 million that we uh, proposed was, was a number that we felt was palatable for the, uh, for the electorate. Could we use 5 million? Yeah. Yep. Could we use 10 million? You betcha. But could it pass? No. Our goal was for one simple purpose, to have something that the that allowed the the, the a breathing room, and these are my words, not the not the group's words, breathing room, so that we could get together as a group, 
to uh, and, and different groups, different committees over the next two to three years to be able to stabilize where we are and 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 not move forward, but stabilize and be able to move forward and figure out where we are and how we can move forward, whether it is town buildings, whether it is UGA funds, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Uh, it, 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 was, it was to give us breathing room. So the $3 million was, was yes, to some extent, Gary, uh, and, and, and I'm not pinning you, it was somewhat pulled out of the air but it was it was a recognition that it was it was a number that at least allowed us to get some keep the wheels on the town government until we you, we we talked about these bigger issues. So good for you for bringing that up, and 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 uh, I, I I just want to say that. Now on on the on the uh, town side, uh, Nancy, I want to I want to push back on you a bit. Because Tom has been a very wonderful, active member of our group for a year, and I'm sure that he, uh, you know, gives you feedback and the school committee feedback on a regular basis. You know, you have known that this number has been floated around for months, and so I don't think it should be a shock to you or any one of the school committee that this this numbers come about. It is it, so. I just I just want to lay that on 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 the line here, um, and 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 last but not least, one of the problems that I, as a citizen, who has no skin in the game, other than just being concerned about our community and the town of Westport, is that is that this seems to be the M O of at least the last few years, where the last possible second. The school committee comes in, they throw down a list of things, and that's probably the wrong word, and I probably want to pull that back, which I will, but comes in at the last minute, and then everybody needs to scramble. This, I'm concerned about the town, and the schools are part of the town, but they are not the town. They're a piece of the puzzle, but they are not the picture. We have many, many needs. We have three people in the in the highway department. We have potholes. We have, I could go on and on down the list. You all know this. And yes, the children are our future, but right now we also need to deal with the present and the future. And so if I'm getting a little ramped up, I am. And given the, the current condition right now of, of what we're discussing and the, 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 last minute change in what what I thought was not a done deal, but certainly was a as, as a as a solid plan for the next three to five years, which good for Jim to who uh, who I believe got thrown under the bus a little bit last night uh, 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 to 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 come up with a strategic plan to move us three, four, five years forward so we can address these issues, I'm gonna tell you right now, I will not and I cannot morally support this, this, this article as, 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 as we're discussing right now. Three million over three years to address the long-term situation and to stabilize funds I'm all for it. I will be the poster child. But anything that is going the way that is that that, that we that was discussed last night, or or, or you know at the selectmen's meeting, I'm I'm against it. And so I'm going to shut up before my dog tells me that I need to uh, to, to 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 be quiet. Thank you, Al. Um, I see Gary's hand up, and then I believe Cindy will be next. Thank you. Yeah, so I appreciate that, Al. You know, I agree. I can't, you know, agree with you more than what, what you've said. But um, you know, I think we're we're biting off more than we can chew here. Uh, we've we've had three million dollars for the longest time. The committees have done a great job uh, trying to promote that. And I think, uh, like I had said, the five million dollars. I mean, that's going to be a big swing for the for the residents. Even though it's there's a need, it's a big difference. I mean, we're talking additional two million dollars here. And sometimes, you know. We've this committee is 
always supported the schools always through the through the building through the you know you name it we've completely supported the schools but sometimes you've got to say no i mean you've got to say no because we don't know what that extra two million dollars we get we we understand that it could be for you know additional staff or to get us up to a level beyond where we need but we right now we need breathing room we need we need to have the breathing room that we haven't had in a decade in this town and i think the departments would appreciate it i know the residents would appreciate it that we can at least get to a you know a level where we're saying okay we can make a decision going forward we we may need to look at economies of scale we all this other stuff to become financially flexible which we don't have right now and that's the only way we're going to get there asking for above and beyond i mean i support the three million dollars right up front I, I if we're crying wolf we better be able to support that we, we better be able to say okay we need this money now not put a dime into stabilization because what that tells the resident is well you know we need three million but we're going to bank some of it you know to me that's a that's that you know we better be honest with the res, with the residents the town is hurting these departments need the money today they needed it five years ago so get us let's get to a level playing field let's get the three million dollars passed and then as we go along if we need smaller overrides to me, that's more palatable, you know, a five hundred thousand dollar override, maybe in in year four, you know. But we need to we need to right the ship today. Forget about what's going to happen five years from now. Go ahead, Cindy. Thank you, Gary. So I think the 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 element that's missing here, and one of the things that um, creates a problem in future years is that if we go with the three million the three million dollar override given the uh needs of um both the school and the town we're going to be we're going to be cutting budgets in fiscal 25. we're it's not enough three million is not enough if if the school and the town fund the projects that are on the list for the three million dollars we're going to be back to budget cutting next year so that's a it's not sustainable if we fulfill all of those needs and particularly and, and i'm not and i'm not and i'm truly i am not trying to pick on the schools it's a number that sticks out in that because of their size and their contractual uh, obligations whether it be one percent two percent four percent what pick a number that's a big number and so it will eat up a lot of that additional levy in the following year so that it makes some of the program changes that are being uh, requested and certainly needed I, I, and, I'm, and i'm not and i'm not dispelling the need but it it fills up so much more of the budget that that whole 54 46 split gets out of whack and now we're back to budget cutting again so we would have pre presented a budget to the townspeople to the voters of three million dollars of an override and this is going to help but we're going to be back to cutting budgets next year so i think that's the element that we don't see because we're only looking at the fiscal 24 budget you have to look at it in a two three year uh, scope and realize that it's going to be gone and we're going to be talking about the same issues in a couple of years Thanks, Cindy. And just just to, to add on to what I was talking about before. So in fiscal 24, the school's deficit would be covered by the, the there's a $280,000 of a, an existing deficit. When you fast forward to fiscal 25, they've got a, they're, they start off their year $800,000 in the hole or $780,000 in the hole. It's the $280,000 deficit plus 500 in free cash. So before they even put pencil to paper next year, they have an $800,000 deficit. So we wouldn't be able to spend the whole 3 million in the first year because you have to count to leave at least that amount for year for fiscal 25. So you, you have, just like Cindy said, you have to be cognizant that that's, that's a hole that, that we already know about. I believe Shauna. So again. So I do want I do want to um, I know that we're talking about the override amount because when we're talking about you know it, it's a whole package right but the town meeting article 
is not the override amount. The, the town meeting article is an additional appropriation contingent on an override. And so we, we right now we've got a $3 million how we would spend it. The select board previously had a $1 million version, but the amount of the projected override is not before town meeting. Um, the, the amount of a projected override is, would be maybe, is probably a very interesting conversation for town meeting and probably directionally we really want to know what the number is, but that's not what we're voting on. We're voting on what should we appropriate contingent on an override the next town meeting at you know when the override passes any subsequent town meeting can change the whole appropriation structure all over the place right so i do think people want to have a plan but but like yeah you have to get up to treading water first you have to you have to get we and gary i know you said you want to spend it i don't want to spend three i don't want to spend it all in year one because we have to be able to grow in year two. We know we have a hole in 25, like the Karen just talked about. So I, I do know people want to talk about what's the dollar amount for the override, but the dollar amount for the override isn't before us on the town meeting warrant. It's it's just a conversation about how we would project to spend. Maybe the right number is four million. Maybe, maybe it is three million. I do have a question, and Buzzy asked this question earlier. And I didn't get an answer again, I'm really curious. And so Mr. Moderator, if Karen, if I can ask through you to the moderator. Absolutely. The regular budget article, the numbers that are presented at town meeting are that from the finance committee is the finance committee version of the budget, which is put before the town meeting. For article six, for the contingent on an override amount, would it be the finance committee presenting to town meeting or is it what the select board had determined should be in the article? Well, our, our tradition has been that the finance committee um, offers main motions on all financial articles, which they recommend. So if the finance committee recommended um, what we see in the text of the warrant article, um, then they would make that motion. Um, if they did not recommend that, um, then um, that the selectman could make that motion or act. Um, and regardless of who makes it, it's amendable yeah. to whatever extent the meeting chooses to amend it. So I think it might, I mean, the, 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 the version I'm projecting might happen, right, is they have different numbers that they would want to recommend. So it would be my, my assumption here, which is not borne out by truth, but my assumption would be the finance committee would recommend approval of an article, but with different amounts than what yeah. we had. So, right. so that would be their motion with the with their amounts that they want, not the select board version that would be. Right. It, it, that it was would be, I, I should not even made the suggestion that selectman would make that that motion um, uh, unless the, the right. If the finance the, committee, the finance committee not would, would, at all, would move then whatever would. numbers they suggest. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And hi there, Steve. By the way, nice to see hi. you. <laughs> you came in right in the right in the heart of uh, <laughs> heart of time. So um, I think Tom was next. Uh, Karen. I think uh, I my little thing says, but I'll let Tom go. But right. I think I think Hugh might be next on my oh, list. Right. I think I now have so Hugh and then and then Tom. Thank you. I just want to repeat what Shauna was saying. This is a one year fix. We're talking about a supplemental budget or supplement to the budget that would be presented, et cetera. And I'm always reminded of the old saw that the perfect is the enemy of the good. I share the concern that Albert mentioned. I said that earlier. If you ask for five, it might be a good, I understand the figure per se is not before the meeting, but it would come through the pieces that were appropriated. And you may end up with nothing. So the three gets you somewhere. Next year is next year. The year after is the year after. We can't plan for five years down the road with a significant part of the budget, depending upon state aid, depending upon what happens with inflation between now and whatever year we're talking about. We have to do the best we can with what we have now under the present circumstances. And I do want to hark back to 
some of the suggestions by the school committee that remember this time last year we were told they needed 42 new positions well that didn't happen they seem to have gotten through the year all right i don't mean to quarrel with the budget i'm not in a position to critique it per se but you gotta make what you do fit the funds that are available and if a five equivalent of a five million override goes down the tubes three would have been better enough said thank you hugh tom tom auburn you're next thank you Karen. good good evening everyone i almost said good morning everyone that's kind of where i'm at right now uh, just a couple of things. What what you just pointed out, um, I think it's just a little bit specious in that those 42 positions were based on a request of the school department to come up with an ideal scenario for staffing. And uh, that's exactly what we did. Um, and so, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that, um, you know, facts are stubborn things. So let me help you with a couple of facts. The first one is this the administration at, at Westport Public Schools in 23 years has been through 35 administrators. Um, I challenge you to find any school district that had that kind of turnover. It's not an accident. It's an accident because they were in the bottom 10th percentile of administrative salaries in the state of Massachusetts. As a matter of fact, um, you'll find if you do the research that the department head teachers at Diamond, all of them make over $100,000 where our uh, assistant principals are making $101,000. Uh, in an effort to even give them a couple of thousand dollars, I contractually increased their, their work year from 220 days to 260 days. Um, that's a significant increase and not exactly a bargaining chip if you're trying to keep continuity in your district. But, you know, beyond that, um, our teacher salaries, if you look at the state average, you know, let me, uh, I apologize. I'm not trying to be in, incognito here. My apologies. Um, state average, uh, the, the teacher's salaries are $1,500 below the state average. And when we talk about, you know, needing, needing more money, you know, it, um, I, I, once again, I, I challenge any district. I, I, I really do wish um, you you could go and take a look at any of the hierarchy of of any of the school districts in this in this Commonwealth and find a leaner um, administrative makeup than we have. You're not going to find it, and I challenge you to do that today. You um, won't. I don't quarrel with your point, but the point is across the town. We lose people from the transfer station because they can make more money elsewhere. We lose oh. firemen, we lose people, we lose people. I'm sure it's true of the schools, it's true of everybody. So I don't discount your wish to have more. I'm just saying it isn't there and taking it away more from the town, which struggles with the same problems, really doesn't help things. Well, again, I'm not I'm not here to discuss, you know, uh, one one group against another because you know, it seems pretty obvious from the Hello News article that um, there, there is, you know, uh, there's clearly a, a problem in terms of staffing. I'm just, you know, I've got to come to the defense of our, of our school district because, you know, uh, it, it seems that we've become the whipping post in the community. And I'm not, I don't think I'm taking a, a paranoid or, or, you know, look at this. I think, you know, again, these are the facts, you know, our, our, our teaching staff is, is 1,500 below the uh, state average. We are 24% above net school spending, but once again, net school spending, like everything else in education, is far behind what 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 you know really adequately uh, indicates what what the financial situation is. As as I put in the uh, narrative, 28% above net school spending is the is the typical average. Um, I absolutely agree with Susan Brayton that. <clears throat> you know, that includes communities that get significantly more state funding. Um, so just, you know, as, as, as these discussions are going on, I, I do need to point out the fact that when the schools were, were asked um, if the $3 million override were to uh, 
come to fruition. Um, and I agree with you that don't make the perfect the enemy of the good um, or vice versa. Um, the reality is, is uh, you know, we couldn't we couldn't say that we're not going to need more money because, first of all, you know, we've got, you know, over 290 employees. We've got 1400 students and their families in a world with um, opioid addiction, um, mental health problems that have all fallen directly and squarely on the school. So, you know, I'm extremely proud in my three years, three year tenure over at Westport of, of what we've been able to do on what I consider to be an incredibly tight uh, budget. So, you know, again, I, I think I've got to speak for, for the schools in that, you know, there is some sort of, you know, dialogue that goes around that where, where um, you know, we're pigs at the trough. But in fact, our, our people work really hard to run as lean of a, a budget as you can. And I will finish with the fact that, again, we've got two principals for four schools. Again, I challenge anybody to find a, a leaner district in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And Kevin, thank you for recognizing me. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I know Al Lees has had his hand up and down. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to take people in order, but I, I don't know, Al, if you want to go next, because I think you were up and down before Buzzy, and I apologize again. So, <laughs> but hold on. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, you know, you know, when you uh, when 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 a man gets over fifty five, uh, you 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 need to uh, you you need to take your time and and do other things. So uh, so yes, it has been up and down. I just want to say a couple of quick things, and I want to quote both my grandmother and my grandfather Lee's. One of them is there is legality and reality. And the other one is that that he, uh, he was never my, my grandfather was never sorry for something he did not say. Unfortunately, I did not pick up on my grandfather's um, uh, <laughs> comment, but I will pick up on my my uh, my mother's uh, my grandmother's comment for a second. And and to go back to Shauna's point and 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 what we're talking about here, the reality as I see it is that. The town and the town meeting will not look at the nuances of whether or not we are voting for, uh, you know, a, a, a budget that may or may not happen in the future based on what happens at a ballot question and a number and so on and so forth. The, the town meeting is going to be voting on the override. And that's going to happen on May 2nd. And that is what the debate is going to be. And it is going to be the debate that is going to consume the, the, the majority of the conversation for that evening. That's going to pull the oxygen out of the room. So whether or not this is only a procedural issue to move to another issue and whatever, will be lost on the vast majority of, of people. So I really do believe that what we need to do, if we can, we meaning, you know, the collective body, uh, present to the town meeting the, you know, a, a, a unified uh, budget uh, uh, with, a, with a number and all the other stuff, that's what is going to, <clears throat> that's what's going to, um, uh, you know, be in people's minds. It's not, well, this is only because of this, and then we're going to move to this, and we're going to move to that. That's going to be lost on people. So I just wanted to say that it's, it's you know, there, there's, there's, that's the common sense of, the, of, of this whole thing. May 2nd is the debate about a budget. I mean, an override. I'm sorry, not a budget, an override. So, that's all I wanted to say, and I'm enjoying the conversation, and I'm going to dial out and hug my dog, but I'm, I'm not going to dial out. I'm just going to hug my dog and listen to the rest. And my wife, of course. Yes, Cindy just said, yeah, what, about, what about me? <laughs> Thank you, Al. Um, Buzzy, you are next. Okay. So uh, a couple of things I'll try to keep uh, quick. Uh, first of all, Steve, 
Uh, my recollection, although my recollection is getting um, uh, less reliable all the time, is not uh, that the Finance Committee gets to recommend the budget, that it's the budget that the Finance Committee recommends that goes on the warrant. Uh, I don't think I'm sufficiently proficient technically uh, to look up the bylaws at the moment and, and not uh, cancel my participation in the meeting. But I will do that as soon as the meeting's over. Uh, I will send you, Steve, and everybody else, if I can, without violating the open meeting law, what I found. But I think what we're going to see when I look it up is that it is the Finance Committee, something that's been tested in the past uh, when um, the select board at one point tried to get its budget presented as the proposal at town meeting, that it is the finance committee's budget that goes to town meeting and anybody can afterwards try to make adjustments to it. So that's number one. Um, number two, uh, my sense is that we have this problem at the moment that's going to have to be, in my opinion, solved by the finance committee uh, of this proposed budget uh, under an override uh, because of the surprise at last night's meeting. I don't know what kind of advance notice there was that the school board, school committee was going to come in with these suggestions. Um, Tom makes a very good point that he was asked to come in with an ideal proposal. Uh, I don't know whether that, because I haven't looked back at the meeting, whether that's the proposal um, that the select board tried to accommodate. Um, but if there had been more notice to the select board, and I think that Al makes a very good point that Tom has been a part of the meetings of the um, um, the fiscal stability group for quite a while, maybe the, uh, the, the school committee could have earlier uh, raised these kinds of proposals. So there would have been time for the select board to respond. And I think that's something uh, that we, um, the finance committee are gonna have to take into consideration in deciding what budget uh, we want to propose, the whole su surprise um, situation. Uh, finally, Gary and other people are right that we're not theoretically proposing an override uh, at town meeting. Uh, the vote on the override will come later. And that will provide us, I think, and Steve again may be able to give us an answer on this, um, with at the ballot, to propose several different override options, a, a $3 million option, a $5 million option. And before that election, that vote at the polls, there's the possibility of educating the public as to what they will be getting and giving up for each of those. Um, so there is town meeting where, although I think Al is right, everybody's going to be thinking they're voting on an override already, uh, where we discuss what this $3 million budget would look like, at least as it is town meeting's opinion at that time. But there's nothing to stop us from proposing other options um, later on, perhaps in the summertime, when we have a vote. I think that's it. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Buzzy. Steve, did you have, did you want to respond to any? Well, I, I, I just want to clarify that there, there is no bylaw that dictates um, whose budget is presented to town meeting. The warrant is prepared by the selectmen. That's their um, power and responsibility. So they write the warrant. Um, I then recognize um, someone to make a motion under every article of the warrant. And I follow tradition with that. And so tradition would be that the um, finance committee would offer a motion under the budget article. So you would propose whatever numbers you think are right for the budget. Um, and then likewise, the supplementary um, appropriation article that follows it um, that would be contingent on the override. Um, likewise, the, the finance committee would, um, 
would move whatever numbers they propose for that. Thank you. That makes sense, Steve. Gary, I think you had your hand up and then it's down and then I see Cindy's. Are you, are you all set? All set for now. All set. Thank you. Cindy, you're up. Okay. Well, I think it's time to start steering this conversation in a little bit different direction. Um, still related, uh, this is directed towards uh, Shauna and Dick. Do you think that if there is a resounding um, uh, you know, no to Article 6 that, you know, the townspeople who are present at town meeting don't seem to have an appetite for any kind of an override. Do you see that the select board, and I know you can't speak definitively for this, would still go and propose an override question at the ballot? They don't have a crystal ball. So for right. me, for me, the first hurdle is what happens on April 11 with the diamond boat. Yeah. I mean, that's because, really the canary in the coal mine. Yeah. Well, it, it's not just that. It's not just that. If, if the, if the diamond boat fails, we need another $450,000, right? right. If, if the diamond boat fails, it's quite clear to me that we need more than $3 million in that override. But also if it fails, it also would be kind of an indicator that we've got a lot of work to do to convince people of an override. So, I um, I don't think, I don't, you know, again, I don't have a crystal ball and I'll let Dick put his crystal ball out there. I don't think you're going to get a lot of opposition to a supplemental budget. I mean, there might be some discussion about how much you're going to put in the, in the, in the um, stabilization. There might be some, like maybe the schools get more or less than whatever is proposed. I think those will be discussed, but I don't think article six is going to fail. I think it's just a matter of amend, what amended version is going to pass. That's just me. But um, I, you know, it, to me, the diamond vote, I like, I can't really tell you, like, if the diamond vote passes, then I think it, we're going to need more than 3 million. And, but that's really about as far as I am right now. Dick, and Dick is here. Yeah. Mr. Oh, do, do you have anything else, Cindy? Uh, no, I, I, Dick can, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Question. Brewer. Well, first of all, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I do believe that uh, voters at town meeting will be less concerned about the details of Article 6 and be more interested in the bigger question of an override. And that, as Shauna points out, and <clears throat> that that would be made in the context of knowing at that time what the vote on Diamond was. But I was going to say something else uh, before uh, this question came up and I'd like to address that. And it has to do with the process we're engaged in at the moment. The way I, the way I look at this is I, I start with the assumption that <clears throat> no matter what the words were, it's really the finance committee who's putting forth the budget or whatever words, the budget that the finance committee supports or whatever. But it's I was on the finance committee and that was always my understanding. And I believe everybody's made a good faith effort. I don't think when I read the uh, new material from the schools, I didn't think of that as a, as a bombshell or something that snuck up on us. I, these are difficult issues. I think the schools made a good faith effort to tell us. In fact, I think they have the obligation of telling us what their needs are, whether we want to hear about that or not, regardless of the cost. We, we have to hear that. The select board uh, did the best it could with the information it had and we came to a decision that we could argue whether or not it was optimal, but China addressed that early and we, we did the best we could. And now I think it's the finance committee that must now listen to this as you have done, review it all and then come to a conclusion as to what you wanna put forth. And whatever you do, I, I will support that. I will abide by that because that's the proper role. And that's not, I hope that's not, not looked upon as a cop-out or passing the buck or anything like that. It's, it's the role that, that we have here. And I think I'm now ready to say, look, you as a finance committee, if you need another meeting, fine, make your decision and we will abide by that. And I don't think there's an appetite at the select board to go back and revisit what we did. I think we moved the ball forward and now it's time for the finance committee, not tonight, but whenever you have your next meeting to, to weigh in and make your recommendation and we'll, we'll support that. 
Karen, I just want to add just one thing, I think, for the benefit of everyone on the, on the call here, if they're not already aware of that. If the diamond vote fails on April 11th, it cannot be brought up again. So it cannot be brought up again as an override or exclusion. So we've had two shots at it, and that's it. So if it doesn't pass, it must be absorbed into the budget. Probably everyone on the call is aware of that, but just for purposes of of our many viewers that may watch this on uh, YouTube in the in the future, that is my understanding. At Karen, I believe you you feel the same way that it's two shots and you're done. So I have no I, idea. <laughs> oh, I thought you had told me today as no. well that you only had two opportunities to do this. Well, I heard no. it from someone that you no, only I have mean. two two chances to um, to attempt this at the ballot. Uh, and you can't keep doing it forever. So, thanks. Anyway. So I just I, I want to talk about the numbers for a second and the the, the challenge that I have right now de dealing into the numbers. So, if three million dollars is ultimately going to be the ballot question, the ballot amount, then the budget as it stands presently, I I don't see it work. It works because presently the school the in in the article six as it's written has the school for 1.1 million. You fast forward to next year, you have to add in 500,000 of free cash onto that number, and the school has said repeatedly over many many meetings that we've had that they already have contractual obligations entering into. 2025 about six hundred thousand dollars so that already is going to eat more of the override so that means next year in fiscal 25 the override of three million dollars 2.5 million would be for the school so when we so we have to factor in what the ballot amount would be to determine this budget so if we're going to presume that it's three million then this doesn't work. If we're gonna presume it's 5 million, then this could work. So that's a very important element that the select board didn't address or vote on for us, for me to feel, how do you, how do we evaluate this? Because that's the reality, that's fiscal 25. So it doesn't work out of the gate. This does not work. Another reason why, Karen, if I can just add, um, you know, we were, I think we're always left in the predicament where it's on our lap to make the decision on whether or not we should vote for or not vote for um, funding. And it's always come down to the schools. Uh, I appreciate the Board of Selectmen and hearing in on uh, what they feel should be a uh, more, more of an override, more of an override. But it is now left to us and i would more like to see us working in unison that okay you know maybe back in october we didn't know it was a three million or we didn't know it was a five million but i think at this point we're almost backed into a corner that we've got to vote for a, for an override as karen just mentioned that's above and beyond what really we talked about all along and that's a dangerous thing because as i mentioned at the beginning you know we had people's hot set on a three million dollar override, and a lot of public have watched us meet these meetings. So, and, and there's been a lot of media attention to this and everything. And for us now to go to the to the voters and to the residents and ask for an additional two million dollars, I don't know. I still think it doesn't sit pretty. I think that, in my opinion, this needs to be really looked at. And you know, don't forget, Proposition Two and a Half is a permanent a permanent increase to the tax levy. In addition to in addition to um, two and a half, and in addition to any new growth. So if we're saying right now we can't live within those parameters, then, and we don't know that a $3 million is going to get us where we need to be, a $5 million is, not, is going to only leave a half a million dollars left for the school, for the town, I go back to, you know, I, I don't see how this can can be can be doable. I, and I'm only one person, and, you know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Right. Well, you know, I think it's needing the complete plan in front of us. And I feel right. like we only have half a plan. Um, I, right. And so I can't, you know, I don't know how to evaluate half a plan. 
And, and I think it gets us to the point where, you know, the three million will get us to a point, maybe not a lot on the town side, but at least it would get us to a point where we can, again, have breathing room. Maybe we need smaller, smaller um, overrides in the future. But again, we've been talking about this for so long. We know we thought the three million was right. And, you know, I think that those are more palatable than asking for $5 million out of the gate right now. Thanks, Gary. Jim, Jim Hartnett, you have your hand up. I, I bet you've got some numbers that you want to talk about. Well, not so much the numbers at this point, right? Um, I haven't vetted them with the Board of Selectmen at this point. Okay. But I, I just wanted to say the three million really hasn't changed. I mean, this has been going on for three or four months at least that we've talked about a three million dollar override. And from day one, we've always knew that this was the bare minimum, that this was just going to get us our heads above water. We knew it wasn't going to solve the problem. It was just going to kind of buy us three or four years so that we can look at additional things going forward. Um, so I, I just want to make that point that things haven't changed over the last couple of days as far as the three million. We've known that this is the bare minimum. If we want to make additional improvements, if we want to do additional positions, if we want to create, uh, put some money in capital projects, then three million is not enough. But to keep us afloat, that three million is the same number we've been working with for months. And it is, but the additional 775,000 from the school is new. So the 3 million was based on the existing expenses, right? Not really adding new things to it. That's correct. Thank you. Nancy, you have your hand up. I'm just gonna briefly say that I just looked through my calendars we completed the school budget with the negotiation with the town and finance committee just around uh, the, thir the third week of March. You know, Al, um, and I respect him in all his volunteer time, I feel that the school committee is volunteer too. We don't get any stipends. We meet as many times and have so many work sessions concerning this. We just finished the budget. I did not see if it came out, it was not provided to the, to the school committee the allocation of the $3 million until the week of March 13th. So when we say surprise and ambush and the schools did this and the schools did that, I just want to set the record clear because we're pretty efficient in moving in on anything. That's when we saw the allocation. Then we had the meeting, the joint meeting the following week in March, where we said that it wasn't enough. And you asked us to come back and, and say what we would be, you know, what's our idea. Jim asked for us to propose what we would do with the three million as proposed. I told him it's just going to fill our gap. It's not going to give us anything new. And then we were told, please give us a list of, of the improvements you would want. And that's what we did. So we replied to what we're asked to do. We, you know, I know Tom sat on that committee, but we did not have the allocation of that until the second week of March. So this isn't, wasn't a surprise. The 3 million was always in play. There's no doubt about that. But how it was gonna be allocated was never in play, at least before my school committee until the second week of March. So I just wanted to have that clarification known. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Hugh, you have your hand up. You've been very patient, Hugh. Thank you. I just want to add what Gary was saying, but also remind us all, it's a permanent increase in the amount of the levy. But it's not the only increase because there's a two and a half percent that we do each year. So without trying to figure out what the actual numbers would be, after three years, quite apart from the override, there'd be a seven and a half percent increase from the current level. And it's probably cumulative, and I've understated the amount, but I just want to make the point, we tend to be talking about the override money as the only new money that will be added to future budgets. It will be a significant amount, but the new construction and the increases that we've been making would add to it. There's always the chance that the state will do various things. There had been some discussion I saw somewhere about raising other things or changing what towns can tax. I don't believe it is the case, but it is not out of the realm of possibility that that limit that that uh, limit could be raised and and give us a semi override power 
through the annual increase. I'm not suggesting we rely on that. I'm saying only the future will be the future and things we don't expect to change can change. Thank you. Thanks, Hugh. So um, I don't see any other hands up at the moment. So it, so I guess it, it appears as though from our discussions that the Finance Committee, as we do with all other warrant articles that have a financial impact, we would make a recommendation on. So it sounds as though um, we could either approve the numbers as they are, or we could make some recommendations that are different than here. Um, so we need to talk about that. We don't have to talk about that at the moment, but we need to talk about that very soon because uh, we're going to need to approve the, uh, we're going to have to vote on this for our next meeting, which is next week. Hugh, go ahead. I just want to suggest that we've exhausted this at this okay. point. If we have something else that we should deal with tonight. Well, we, we have exhausted it, but we, we have to make a decision. So we, we have to continue to. At the next meeting, but I maybe I misunderstood. Well, if we, if we feel that um, we have enough thoughts and information that we can come to next meeting with proposals and vote on it on the same evening, that would be fine. How does everyone feel about that? Are we also talking about, um, so we'd be talking about the dollar amount in the levy, we're not, but we'd also be talking about, not in the levy, the dollar amount in the override, and we'd also be talking about how we want to fund the override. One, one, and one, three, zero, zero. Is that what we're going to be talking about? Or? I don't think so. Well, the, the finance committee doesn't determine the dollar amount of the override at the ballot, so that's the select board. But yeah. In my opinion, we have to presume that it's three million. I can't presume anything different. Mm -hmm. So, with that assumption, then we really need to look at the but this budget and making that work. And again, presuming the three million is the number, the numbers as presented in the warrant currently do not work, in my opinion. Okay, so um, we're not going to talk about we're not going to talk about how it should be funded. The three million all at once. That's not, that's we can't discuss that. Well, we 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 have to present a a budget for Article Article Six. So if this, for example, if the Finance Committee chose to let's go back to where we started last week and go back to a million, we could certainly that's our that would be something that we could recommend. Mm. And that gets us, that gets us balanced. It gets the schools, it gets the schools balanced, but it doesn't add any additional, and it doesn't go above and beyond what we think the $5 million would, would go. Right. We could go back to Jim. So Jim had his presentation when he was doing the million, 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 and wow. we could go back to that presentation. And look at that. Yeah, I mean, I'll just tell you, Betty. Hold on, Betty. I'll just give you my opinion quick. I've thought about this a little bit. I would support the million, million, million. Um, I would support that if it gets us by and lets us gets us breathing room. But I just can't support a five million dollar override. And 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 it's not because um that we don't need it. It's not the need. It is definitely not the need. It is that I think we need more time to look at what we need as far as budgets are concerned down the down the road you know i i was a bit a big advocate of not you know let's just not put a band-aid approach on it and you know i'm kind of like saying that we are putting a band-aid approach by just getting us by with one million but at least it gives us a level playing field we can get back to maybe some kind of normal um and look at potential smaller overrides in the future after the three-year mark but I think asking again for an additional $2 million may just put the whole thing, abosh the whole thing. Um, but I know I'm only one person on here. So that's mm -hmm. what I would that we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, 
if, if, it, if it was a million, right, just as the example, so in if it was the, the million, even in Jim's original or the select board's original presentation before yesterday, that that would give the school, again, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but in the $450,000 range for fiscal 24. So that's a supplement to what's already in the budget. And so their current deficit is 280,000. So they, they would come whole in fiscal 24. And so then we have the opportunity in fiscal 25 as the as Jim had pointed out, it, it, you don't we don't have to decide a million million a million right now. We're only funding year one of it. So next year you could raise it right to the three million and then we give more dollars. Hmm. So so there is an option there. So you know that's that's a scenario. I think I think Jim presented a good a good plan. I mean, you know, it, it, we know we're going to have to eventually address this again. There is no question about it. I, absolutely. Um, and you know, all at once right now, I don't know. All right, I think I see a few other hands up. Betty, Betty was was Betty had, yeah. was <laughs> one second, Hugh. Yeah, Betty's um, right. Hi, I'd like to uh, see what Jim had proposed as an alternative to to the 111 for the 3 million trying to see how much could be allocated to the schools and the town uh, and looking at what you're going to put into the stabilization fund he he does i think have such a uh, possibility and i'm hoping you're looking at that um, the second is that being very heavy on the advocacy right now we have pushed the three million. It would be very difficult to change it to mm. five million. And the third thing is, in opinion of the advocates, a lot. And you're talking to a lot of people. I'm talking to a lot of people, and they're nasty back to me a lot. But it's very clear: without the parent support, this will not pass. So I. I'm talking politically, uh, polit it's my personal opinion, um, from just talking to others. I think that we need to really consider perhaps giving a slight advantage to the uh, schools. And the reason I say that is that I don't think it'll pass if the parents don't um, stand behind it. And then there would be nothing for the town so we have to kind of think politically uh, as well as economically. Thank you, Betty. Um, Hugh, go ahead. And then Steve, you're I next. I'm sorry. Steve. He, was, he was up. Hope he was up. OK, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Steve, you're muted if you're. There we go. OK. OK, great. Um, I, just. just you know, we, we are all citizens who all have a stake in this and all have feelings about it. But I just thought listening to the conversation, it's, it might be useful to just remain clear on powers and responsibilities here. Um, it is the responsibility of the Finance Committee to recommend appropriations to town meeting. Um, and so they, as, as always, you will recommend the, uh, the operating budget that we appropriate certain amounts of money to the various departments of the operating budget. And it appears that this year you are also going to recommend some appropriations contingent on an override. It is the power and responsibility of the selectmen um, to call an override vote if they so choose um, and to determine the amount that they're going to put on that ballot. That is not an item of power or responsibility for the finance committee. Now, that doesn't mean that the finance committee doesn't have reason to weigh in on that and that everybody shouldn't be talking about it, but I think it would be good to just remain clear that that's neither the finance committee's power nor responsibility to decide how much an override ballot, the, the number that should sit on an override ballot. That is the power and responsibility of the selectmen. Thank you. And and I just want to clarify too, I, I wasn't alluding to anything different. So when I was saying I'm presuming it's 3 million, it's because 
the conversations that the select board has have been nothing other than three million. And so I couldn't presume anything of otherwise. Oh no, I, and I didn't I didn't think right. you were right. No. And I, if I could get one other small thing in here too. Sure thing. This has only happened a, a couple of times in the conversation, but but I hope you will all join me in trying to avoid speech that makes it sound like people are going to come to town meeting and vote on an override because they're not <laughs> the, the town meeting is not about an override um the, you know if they vote yes on article six on the contingent appropriations it's not going to mean anything if they don't if you know the selectmen don't then call an override election place a number on it and the town vote affirmatively on that so town meeting is just going to come and decide on what how much money to appropriate to the def departments the, the several warrant articles and so on and they may make contingent appropriations as well but they're not going to come and vote on an override and i it, it'll make my job easier if if people don't show up thinking they're coming there to decide an override Great. thanks thank you hugh go ahead you're next i just wanted to say what, what gary has said but add a little further Instead of one one, I would think we would want the three to be effective as soon as it's effective, assuming all the things we've been talking about. That starts to fill in the holes you're talking about. We have the the standard increases as well underneath it. So deferring it just sort of stretches out the bleeding, and I think. I mean one 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 versus three as soon as it's available, assuming that happens, gives the breathing when we've been talking about. I wouldn't oppose Jerry's approach to 111, but I think that the money available as soon as it is available is a better approach. So, Hugh, just on that that <clears throat> variation, so if it were three in the first year, how would you appropriate that? Because, again, you have to leave some. Meeting, next year would appropriate it. It would be the funds available for action for next year's but. The year after his budgeting would now include that money. And oh. the other thing I wanted to just emphasize, everybody else, everyone has been saying it. We're stuck on the three million figure. It's been mentioned, it's been discussed, it's floating around town, plus or minus, to try to raise it by roughly 50% at the 11th hour, I think is a prescription for defeat. So Hugh, I wanna go back to your, your point. Mm -hmm. So. If if the appropriation were to be three million, the concern of mine would be, again, you've got a hole to fill in fiscal twenty five with the free cash and the deficit for the school, so and, and and contractual obligations that are sitting in front of us. So if we were to spend the whole three million in fiscal twenty four, you're going to run into another the three million the next year. This is a self replenishing addition to what we otherwise would have. No, no. Yes, but you're, it increases you, the levy by three million. But if you permanent. if you took the three million and spent it in the operating budget, then next year you're going to have those same expenses, and you're going to spend the three million next year on but operating I, expenses. I'm not suggesting you spend it uh, arbitrarily. You see how it fits into what you're doing and what has to be done. But how would you appropriate? Right. It? Well, you're better off if you do it, allocate it, use it when it comes around rather than spacing it out because then the whole just continues and doesn't get filled. But how would, so how would you appropriate the 3 million in the first year? 54, 46. But then the, that money will get spent in fiscal 24 and then in fiscal 25. 25 is what we're talking about. I think 24 is pretty much buttoned down. That's the one we talked about prior to adding to it through an override. But the so this article six is for the fiscal twenty four budget. So if, right. so if we were if we were to allocate the whole three million to operating budgets, then it would get spent. Now I think the answer is we are going to allocate allocate promote recommend a supplement to a supplement to the existing budget. That's contingent is whatever it is it turns out to be, but it's contingent upon the override. And I think the what Gary was suggesting was you only add a million dollars to 
the operation this year. Next year, you do another million, another million the year after. I'm suggesting you use it. Now, maybe you put it into the capital stabilization fund. Maybe you put it into paying off things that are lurking, which would have the effect of freeing up money for the next year's budget when we come to it. I'm saying you use it. However, you use the full amount when you have it rather than deferring having it for a period of time. That's right. All. But I guess what I'm trying to say is if in the first year you use the whole three million, then you get to fiscal 25 next year that now you have expense, new expenses of three million dollars. Those three million dollar expenses are going to be there. And now you've got a hole that the school has as a deficit that can't be filled because you've spent all the money. I, I, I guess for cross purposes, you have a budget in this year at, at adding the three million next year you're not going to add three million you have the same budget and then there will be increases for raises you've got two and a half percent which is the the normal increase for that year's revenue you're saying no but i don't think that's right maybe someone else can um i i i don't and think you can spend the whole that the an override raises floor, and I don't think it is in lieu of an annual increase, but maybe I'm wrong. Can what I, I'm trying, right, so what I'm trying to say, Hugh, so if you appropriated the whole three million now, that means you're gonna incur $3 million of new expenses, right, to, and then you're gonna spend it with the, that revenue. Those same expenses are gonna, be in fiscal 25 you're going to yes you're going to get another three million next year but you're going to have another three million of expenses next year why no you have the same budget that you had this year for next year subject to inflation it isn't necessarily going to go up by anything i mean it will realistically but it's not going to jump three million every year i, I think maybe i think what <laughs> we're i think what maybe we're assuming is that the budget will increase every year by three three million yeah and, that's or, or whatever right. And and I think maybe if we balance the budget this year yeah. with, with the million, 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 which is not what I was suggesting at the beginning, but now I think maybe it's palatable. If Karen says that if, in fact, we can balance the budget with the override going a million, a million, a million, not, not necessarily adding on any new endeavors that the town may want, um, they have a budget that they have to live with. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think, what really needs, that's what really we need. To, now, if we're saying that the million, 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 or the three million up front is not a budget that they can live with, if we're trying to just fill in holes, we're trying to do all these extra things, that's a different conversation. But if we can say that right now, we're confident that all these, all these increases that we're looking at fill the budget gaps, then, in a, and then we have two and a half and blah, 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 everything else. The, yeah. departments, the departments will have to know they've got to now live within that budget. They've got to now live within the budget that the override has provided. I'm fully open to either approach. But I think what I'm saying is I don't expect there to be a $3 million increase year after year after year as an initial one to dig out of a hole. And then I'm assuming a flat budget, which it won't be, but it's still our other revenue. But the other point, I was going to say is that um, I mean we could be completely wrong. Million, I, think, that's, I think realistically, in terms of what everybody has been saying, other than the FinCom, is that figure is one that's been around town for a number of months now. People have gotten used to it, either for or against, etc. Raising the number at the last moment. And I understand that would come with the ballot question, but still, it'll be in conversation by town meeting. Uh, pretty like guarantees so, confusion and confusion would mean opposition. And we add to the mix, Cameron. We add to this mix that uh, you know we, we've we've added like all this extra money in there with free cash. That's kind of compounding all this. Right. So well, I'm gonna maybe Jim can explain. Can I just maybe offer one more explanation of what I, what I'm trying to say? So the fiscal 24 budget is presently balanced. It has cuts in there, but it's balanced. So for example, the school has 280,000 of cuts that it's going to need to make. 
if if the override, if we said, let's do the override of 280,000 in, in revenue. So the school is then gonna incur another 180,000 of expenses, and then they're gonna have more revenue to cover it. Next year, they're gonna have those same 280,000 of expenses, and then the override is still gonna be 280,000. That's how this is gonna work, but at the $3 million level. So you, because because it's a new budget next year, and I mean, 25, and the money that will go into that budget will come from the revenues we have in that year. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Go ahead, Jim, maybe, go ahead, please. This is something, I, I mean, I have to see visually in order to really understand it, and even then I still struggle the way this, this whole thing works. I, to me, just listening to everybody, it sounds like three million is is at least right now the number that people are fixated on, or or at least considering. I would like to move forward with it. You know, one option maybe maybe after this meeting we come up with three options. Right, we come up with the original proposal. Um, we come up with the option with the board of selectmen's new numbers from the other night, based on three million, and we come up maybe with a third option. Mm -hmm. We put them visually so we can see them and understand them. And then, you know, the finance committee can take a look and say, I don't like this one. I like this one. I don't like this one. Because um, I, I, to me, I can't make a decision without seeing it visually. Um, and it's not my decision to make anyway. But. Right. That makes sense, Jim. I think I, I, agree. I, I agree. So I think once the visuals are, I, I think we can understand the, um, the impact of the of next year. Okay. Um, Alize has his hand up. Yeah, yeah. My, my hand's been up and, and it's been down. It's been up and it's been down. So I'm, I'm just going to sign off for the night. But I, I do, I do want to say a couple of things. Gary's comments made, made a lot of sense. Jim's made a lot of sense. The $3 million is on the table. All right. Play the cards you're dealt. And that that's what people have in their mind whether or not they end up uh, voting for against how the split or whatever that that that's that's to be seen but you know it's getting too confusing for the for the average person you know you guys are deep in the weeds i'm deep in the weeds but for the average person sitting at the town meeting at the at the at, at the uh, school department or, or school uh, building uh, four weeks from now, this this is just, you know, this is blowing their brains. It's mind boggling. And what we need, in my opinion, and then I'll leave it at this, is, and I think Gary may have teed off on what I said or vice versa, we need, in my opinion, to have a $3 million override, one, one, and one 56 40 or whatever the math is 54 to stabilize the ship so that we have three to five years for a variety of town people and town uh, uh, elected officials to be able to not kick the can down the road which i'm afraid is happening again and again and again by the select board and a few others to really sit down and figure out what our long-term uh you know financial future is and how we how we how we deal with it how we deal with the schools how we deal with our town property how we deal with all this the the other things that are that are on the table so that that is my that's my bottom line my bottom line is is three million one one and one i'm all i'm i'm happy to to, to support that anything short of that i'm not there so anyway thank you all for all you do and uh and and i'm just going to sign uh, mute myself Thank thanks you. thanks al uh yeah so let's we need to wrap this up but jim i appreciate you're going to run some different scenarios i'm definitely in favor of a 111 i don't believe at all we can 
expend all the three million all in the first year because we've got a um, a deficit that that will be impeding us in fiscal 25 and we need the dollars but let's let's run through some scenarios so um if anybody else we, we need to move on because we have a lot of warrant articles that we need to review and recommend tonight um but um does anyone else have anything else that they want to add you shauna and everybody's welcome to stay or not but uh, i don't see other any of the hands up um, before we before we uh, lose too much steam, we need to just talk about next week. So our normal scheduled meeting is Tuesday. Um, that's the night of the diamond vote. And I think it would be more important that we meet after the diamond vote. So in case there's something there that we need to place consideration to, I'm going to suggest to the committee that we maybe meet Monday night and Wednesday night. So that gives us one more opportunity to review the scenarios that will be presented if we have anything else so we can finalize it. I'm just very concerned that um, having numbers in front of us that we're gonna need to make some decisions and we're we're running out of time at this point. And Jim, what's your, what's your final date that you need? Now, you need to get our recommendations and our motions uh, in print, right? So will Denise do that? We can we can get that done once I get them. I just um, the warrant has to be posted 14 days prior, so that's the 18th, which is a Tuesday. The 17th is a holiday, so we'd really like to get it posted that Thursday or Friday before. Okay. Uh, which is next so that, Thursday or Friday. So. Right. Okay. So we need to wrap this up Wednesday. Wednesday. Period. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. So if we meet Monday and then if we don't meet to meet if we wrap it all up on Monday, then we don't need to meet on Wednesday. So we can get as many of the warrant uh, recommendations to you as possible first thing Tuesday morning after our meeting, at least on Monday. And then any stragglers, if there are any, we'll have them for you right away. How many warrant articles are there? 30, 32. We can crunch through a few tonight. So yeah, I think, I think we uh, should, you know, keep going. Yeah. Sure. I mean, that's, Night that's, is young. Monday, Monday, and then we use Wednesday as a backup. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Uh, and then if the diamond causes something that we may need to revisit, then we do have Wednesday just in case. Um, okay. So Steve is here. Hi, Steve. <laughs> you are coming just as a friendly hello to kind of give us our um, our primer do you have anything that you want to talk to us about add to anything we appreciate you being here here and all all we're, what we're going through i don't know he's still here oh did he leave <laughs> yeah i think so he had it huh yeah all right. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to our world <laughs> all right that's frees up some time for us <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. well thank you everyone for coming thank to the you. meeting um betty and Shauna and Jim, appreciate it. We'll we'll touch base, Jim, with your scenario planning. <laughs> so, so the only two things on the warrant that uh, I just want to point out is um, the latest one. I, I sent you an email. We deleted a couple of articles at the end and moved those to article number three. And then uh, we deleted the uh, changing in the dates for the uh, warrants to get to the finance committee. That article is taken out. The, the only thing I'm waiting on really right now, I think the only unknown besides the contingency budget is the um, the police department. That arbitration decision came in last week, which was essentially four, four, and four. So we, we're working on retro numbers for 2022 fiscal year and 2023. Um, right now we have $25,000 transfer going into the police department salaries and that is to cover the sro office of details at the elementary school for the remainder of the year mm -hmm. so there is no funding right now in that line item for the retro um, we do have some excess money in the salary accounts due to some military leaves and a couple of other um, issues but until i get those numbers from the police department i will not know where that stands and do you expect those in the next few days or? i'm hoping to have those by thursday or friday but it's, okay. it, there's a lot to it, and it's, um, yeah, there's incentives, there's details, there's overtime, there's 
Would you prefer we can we can make our recommendations and then amend it next Monday if we need to? Would yeah, you rather really have it that way? That's fine. This way, that's in case you don't have to change anything, this way you already have it. That works. That's all right. Okay, we can do that. Been built into the uh, FY twenty four budget. Has any of those amounts been built into the twenty four budget? Can we assume a certain amount. I believe we should be okay with the FY24 budget. We we had appropriate an additional, in addition to the 2%, 2% that's been going across the years, we put an additional $96,000 into the police department budget. But um, we still have, I think, eighty two or $86,000 kind of put aside in case that, that number has to be changed. Okay. Hey, hey, hey Jim, while you're here, one of the um, articles um, for current year appropriation transfers um, included accounting expenses of 15,000. What was that for? Accounting, I believe that's, they have new software coming in and that's for the portion that they owe for the remainder this year. But, um, you know, I'd uh, like to okay. confirm that unless Nicole's still on the line, which I don't. I think she I don't think she, yeah. I think she Okay. Uh, I believe that's what that's for. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, thank you. Does it, anything else for Jim or? Enjoy thank your you. night, people. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We're just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, this is this will be a piece of cake. <laughs> okay, so everyone should have the 14th draft of the warrant 4423. So that's the one that we're working on. So Article 1. It looks as though the motion is to was to pass over. So um, I'd entertain a motion that the finance committee will also pass that over. So moved. Second. Okay. I am going to go through these and I'm going to do try to do everything in the same order to make this easier. So, um, so Buzzy. It's on mute. Maybe you stepped away. <laughs> we may not have a quorum. <laughs> oh, we need. Let's One, see. Do two, we have a quorum? We got Gary. Oh yeah, we do have a quorum without him. We do. Zach, uh, you, Gary, Karen, me. We have five. Okay. All right. Yeah, all of us. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Aye. Cindy. Yeah. Aye. Zach. Aye. And Karen. Oh, Buzzy. Oh, there's Buzzy. Buzzy's back. Nay, no, I. <laughs> <laughs> and Karen, I. All right. Article two. This is the um, current year transfers. The, the department year transfers, article two. So, does anyone have any questions on that? If not, a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Roll call. I'm going to go in the same order. Buzzy? Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Yes. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. Karen? And I. That's me. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Okay. Article three is uh, to transfer certain sums of money from articles from previous years. So I believe this is freeing them up and moving them to the cable capital stabilization fund. Yeah, clean up article. Right? Well, clean up old articles. Move in favor. Second. Second. Yep. Thank you. I'll do a roll call. Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye. Mary. Yes. Cindy. Aye. Zach. Aye. And Karen. Aye. Article. Four is to fix the compensation for town officials for fiscal year beginning fiscal 23. So moved. Second. All right. Roll call. Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Uh, yeah, aye. Cindy. Aye. Zach. Aye. And Karen. Thank you. Aye. Article five is the fiscal 24 budget which we did approve at the last meeting but um but let's uh, we will approve it here as as our motion so moved Second. As present, yeah as presented as presented thank you buzzy aye hugh aye gary aye cindy 
Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen, aye. Thank you. We are going to skip right over Article 6. Oof. <laughs> Which is the is the uh, bud, override budget appropriation? So we're skipping over that. Uh, Article seven is the um, capital improvements for uh, the year. It's seven hundred sixty-one thousand, and it's all coming from free cash. So moved. Second. I will do a roll call. Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Zach? Aye. Karen, aye. Thank you. Article 8 uh, is to authorize the town treasurer for borrowing. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, Buzzy? Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen, aye. Thank you. Article 9 is to transfer for $40,000 for the border. Board of Assessors for Fees and Expenses for the Revaluation Program. So moved. Second. Thank you. I'll do a roll call. Buzzy. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. 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 Zach? Aye. And Karen, aye. Uh, Article 10. Uh, this one. No, this is the. Uh... Modest adjustments to right. exemptions for the elderly. Yeah. Buzzy and I should probably disqualify ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Right. Right. Uh, so, so right. moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Buzzy? Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen, I thank you. Article 11 is uh, another. Um, what is Article 11? To vote? Exemptions. Thank you. More exemptions. 22, yep. Right. Uh, Veterans. Motion to approve. Oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I was reading it. Sorry. <laughs> is there a second? Oh, second, sure. Thank you. Buzzy. Aye. This is the FYI. Aye. This is the veterans one. This yes. is for veterans. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Buzzy said aye. So Hugh. Aye. Gary. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Zach. Aye. And Karen. Aye. Thank you. Article twelve. Uh, this is for the town clerk to remain closed on Saturdays. I'm not sure that that necessarily has a financial impact. Do we need to? Um, I don't. Th I don't think that we need to. I think we have no recommendation, right? No recommendation, right now, right? So, I, do we need to vote on no recommendation? I forget how this works. I think we do. Yeah. We do right. Is we that uh, so, uh, Karen? Can I just ask? Do we, no. They're not open on Saturday to begin with, are they? No, but I. I think that there was some. There, there was some quirkiness in the in in the in the way that it was written. Oh. That I think somebody could actually push the fact that Saturday was a business day for filing purposes, that you could oh. kind of push the envelope okay. on yeah. meeting postings and whatnot if you wanted to. Um, they are they were open on some Saturdays for voter registration sometimes. So and I think this was just to fix fix it for purposes of filings. Yeah. For the calendar. Oh. Yeah, yeah, for the calendar. Yep. Right. Mo a motion to approve. Motion to or not. Oh. To uh, to motion to no recommendation. Right. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Buzzy. No recommendation. Right. Correct. Aye. Hugh. No recommendation. Aye. Gary. Aye. No recommendation. Cindy. Aye. Zach. No recommendation. Aye. Thank you, and Karen, no recommendation, I. I know this is coming hard at you, Zach, but you're doing great. I'm hanging in there. No problem. I'm tracking. This is your first, this is like the speed dating, you know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we used to spend a couple of nights on these. Uh, all right, Article 13 is... Um, 
We just did 13. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, right. For 13 is to to hundred thousand dollars to continue to fund expenses for the former high school to keep that open and operating. Well, it's also to, to either sell or do something else with it. It's so to generally deal with the old high school. I think that there's a separate article for that. There's a separate article to evaluate what to do. I think that's I covered. Was, I, I think it covers it. Oh yeah, this is the one to sell or reuse, right? I think you put the other part in the operating budget, Karen. Is this to do the study? Yeah. Yeah. This is not to do the study. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is not for the to maintain, sell, or reuse. No. I thought the other one was later in the later in the warrant, right? That's the feasibility study that is later. Um, I. That's Article 26. This is to maintain the operating expenses of this, the existing building. This is for insurance and uh, utilities. Right. That's a little. That's a little confusing if you read it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah I know we were shelving this. One. Right. I mean, it says says to fund expenses to sell or reuse. Right. I don't know. Maintain, which is what Cindy's saying. Now take her word for it. Yeah, this is the same. A similar article was last year to because the building is still occupied and open, and we're incurring insurance and utilities or expenses for it. And in, in fact, the insurance is lower because it's occupied. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Uh, a second. Thank you, Buzzy. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to say I would prefer to come back to this. Okay, sure. After after we get some explanation of the language. Okay, sure thing. So we're going to leave open. Well, that's just my vote. I, I agree. This is a little confusing. I agree with what the wording is. Not that it's such a big deal, but what? We can come back to it. So who, who would like to get clarification? Does someone want to send um, Jim an email? I'll, um, I'll, I'll send something to Jim uh, Hartnett and ask him for a full explanation. Okay, thanks. I'm not sure that the language can be changed at this point. I suppose it could. I think it's the sell or reuse. I mean, it's yeah. one thing to say fund expenses to maintain, including all incidental and related expenses, but it's yeah. the sell or reuse in this article which is duplicated to some degree in in the in the other one remember the motion is what we really would control right so we'll get i'll, I'll get asked jim for a explanation in a hog up monday okay great thank you um article 14 is to approve 27 9 for the landfill receipts reserve motion so move. second thank you second great buzzy uh, aye Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen, aye. Thank you. Article 15 is to fund the Marine Services Enterprise. So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, roll call, Buzzy? Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen, aye. Thank you. Article 16 is the funding of the water line enterprise. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Zach. Aye. And Karen, aye. Article 17 is to fund the town beaches enterprise. So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, Buzzy. Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen, aye. Thank you. Article 18 is to uh, appropriate for the cable television special revenue fund. This is what pays for um, Valerie and John, right? Yes. Yeah. Beach to beach operation. Well, this no, no, is the cable, cable TV. 
This is I'm our sorry, yeah, same thing, though. Yeah. Motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. Buzzy. Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen, aye. Article 19 is to amend bylaws, uh, which I. Do we have to do this one? 19. Um, is the revolving funds, is it? Revolving funds, right. Our but line. it's a, but it's uh it nineteen is amending the bylaws for whatever reason. I don't know if these are the maximum amounts that are being um why don't I ask Jim about that too, as to why no, these okay. are that's a good idea. Okay, so that would be nineteen and twenty. Uh nineteen and twenty, I guess. 20 is what we they typically yeah 20 is the normal appropriation for right that. so i think i think 19 uh increases the amounts but i will double check with him so we can go to 19 and 20 on Monday. okay great thank you we'll skip over those for now 21 is the community preservation budget which betty slade gave us the presentation on that last week or so motion to approve Second. Uh, roll call Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Zach. Aye. And Karen, aye. Thank you. We are cranking through. Awesome. Article 22 is um, $30,000 for uh, to put in to match for federal and state grants. So move. Second. Roll call. Thank you. Buzzy? Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. Karen? Aye. Thank you. Article 23. Um, this, this one, we need someone to explain it to us. This is the mean, right. The yep. municipal light plant. So well, this, is, this has like been going on and on for the last couple of years. They yeah, want right. to. And I, I think it is simply using a weird statute for a reasonable right. purpose. Which they, is want use, they want to use a statute that's from the 1930s to to, to operate a municipal light plant, but it's really for internet, town wide internet. That's really right. what that's I think is the case. But I'd like to have it confirmed because the last thing in the world we want to do is go to the lighting business. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with your your analysis, Gary, but yes. Want to make sure we have a confirmation from Jim yeah. or whomever. I will. Um, I will add I, Article Twenty Three to the list. Thank you. So Article Twenty Four. Um, we we'll just related. No motion to approve. This is for the study. The this study. Is for, this is for the the um, salary study. Salary survey. Oh. No, no, it no isn't. this is still for 20, internet. 24 is. Oh, I'm sorry. Skip one. Internet advice. I think they're all related. Yeah. That's the same, too. Yeah. Right. So I, 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 will, think, uh, I, would, I would like to know more about that because this is probably okay. about selling bonds and finance, a variety okay. of things, revenue bonds. How is this supposed to work? And I believe it is a fiber optic thing, but. Right. And it's paid by user fees. Passing. Right. Yeah. Right. Right, but let let's get a a, um, a direct explanation on that as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. Article twenty five, we're familiar with. So this is the thirty thousand dollars for the personnel board to do a study, uh, wait employee wage study. So moved. Second. Here we go. Roll call. <laughs> now we're now we're rolling again. Buzzy. Uh, aye. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Zach. Aye. And Karen, aye. Whew, good to be rolling. We were stagnant there for a couple there. Oh, we're going to get through this. <laughs> Article 20. Did I miss Six. one? Sorry. 26. 26. I thought I did. 26. So this is the article. Um, oh, right. This is the article to uh, potentially do a feasibility study on the old high school and other properties to determine what to do with them. And that's um, a, 
amount to uh, not to exceed two hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. Now, I don't want to drag it out, but is this for every municipal building? That's a or every abandoned municipal building. It's it's it says to evaluate municipal buildings and yeah. the use of the old high school. So right. I believe not just abandoned buildings. It would be. Um, every building. <laughs> I, I think they're trying to go, kind of come up with like a highest and best use for all of the buildings. Like, does it make sense to consolidate? Does it make sense to keep what we have and wow. upgrade? It's a study that will be comprehensive to look at all of the options that the town would have with some rough idea of how much it would cost. Did we get any testimony? The important thing, and they say how much would cost. There was a quasi study some time ago, it was useless because. It gets out with a physical structure and what could be done with no connection with cost or market or anything else. Mm -hmm. This at least sounds like it covers the possibility. And we and the town will have a chance to react to whatever gets suggested. It's right. not a blank check. This right. is an analysis. Yes. What was your question? Uh, did we get any kind of testimony with respect to this? No, I think this... we. Don't. Um, other than what Jim Jim, Jim Hart did had, right. had talked about it, I think last week he talked with right. us about it. Um, yeah, and it's two hundred thousand dollars going to be enough to do enough for the feasibility study, I think. Mm -hmm. Jack, go ahead. Yeah, we talked about this one last week, and I remember it being very vague. We, I, I'm looking at my notes here. I literally have under Article 26 no data. So it's one thing to say this feasibility study is going to be not to exceed 200K, but we don't even know what it's going to entail. So I, Jim had I've, mentioned he's going to pull that off because it's pretty evident we need more. We need more data. And then also, like, I connect 26 with 13. They're not clear. Yep. Okay. I will, I will add that to uh, his, I mean, basically I think what he can do is give us a nice full explanation on each one of these uh, things and be available for questions. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. Non -criminal dispositions. It would be really nice if I'll, I will send this, this list to him tomorrow. So it would be nice before the end of the week, if he could provide us with, some of this detail so that way we would have it on monday right right he so, might be able to just do a quick little narrative which yeah. might be sufficient right like yeah. you said for us so okay um so 26 i've added to the list but we know he'll be joining us anyway at the meeting to present the override option so right. <laughs> he's not totally off the hook from right being with us <laughs> um uh article 27 is non-monetary right. So we can um, make no recommendation. Recommendation. no recommendation. No recommendation. Okay. So, uh, okay, thank you, Gary. Hi. I'm sorry, Buzz. I went out of order. I'm sorry, <laughs> Buzzy. Hi. Oh, just making sure you're all paying attention. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> you? Hi, no recommendation. <clears throat> Hi, no recommendation. Thank you, Cindy. Hi, Zach. No recommendation. Hi. And Karen. Hi. Thank you uh article 28 to see if the board of selectmen to to authorize them to negotiate and execute payments in lieu of taxes for power, solar power i think we need an explanation right payment in lieu of ta yeah, pilot they want to start a pilot program with the solar companies yeah i guess previously what they were paying just fees and if they're not for profit Maybe their tax bill. We we need a more explanation. Think, well, in mass, in in under the general laws, you either tax uh, personal property or a pilot program. So they must right. even tax personal property. Now they want to change it to pilot. Oh, they're looking to change it to pilot. I don't know. I think as the state tried to or did prevent towns from taxing solar property. So maybe this is there, uh, yeah you're you're right there's legislation right now i believe that hasn't really gone anywhere that the solar companies are saying that uh they're trying to fight the tax the tax on it that's basically what's happening right now so we need a more ex explanation of what's going on right so this may that may be the answer to why they want a pilot program <laughs> right right 
<clears throat> okay, I've added to the list. Great, thank you. Article 29 is a zoning bylaw. Motion to make uh, no recommendation. No recommendation. Second. Roll call, Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye, no recommendation. Gary. Aye, no recommendation. Cindy. Aye, no recommendation. Zach. No recommendation. Aye. Aye, aye. thank you. Our, we are so close. Article 30, it's another zoning bylaw. <sighs> Let's see, which one is this? Oh, this is all frontage um, issues for space allocation. Uh, I move that no, we make no recommendation. Second. Roll call, Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye, no recommendation. Gary. Aye, no recommendation. Cindy. Aye, no recommendation. Zach. Aye, no recommendation. And Karen? Aye. So how you doing, Jess? You're doing okay with these votes? We're almost done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's behind the scenes tracking every move we make. Good. So thank Good. you. Yes. Uh, we forget she's here, but she's doing doing an awesome job. All right. Article 31. Looks like it's another zoning bylaw. Move uh, no recommendation. Oh, and Article 32 is also, do you want to do both at once? Uh, oh, boy. They, now now we're getting really uh, edgy. Uh, Article 31 and 32. No recommendation. That's my vote. All right. Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Aye. No recommendation. Cindy. Aye. No recommendation. Zach. Aye, no recommendation. Thank you, and Karen. Aye. Article 33. Looks like it's amending some personnel bylaws. Uh, none yeah, of I guess the animal control officers' hours were changed from 30 to 40 hours, I guess. Um, and then the assistant was hours were changed as well. Um, Gary, I, I got I got some information. I just wanted I'm, I'm going to take thirty seconds here just to explain something to Gary. On the Council on Aging, Gary, evidently the board did not approve the, all the language in that job description. So this may come back and be um, either deleted or amended. So just so you know, I'll let you know when I hear from Bev on this. But she said she was having some trouble with her board. On oh, the, the, uh, the um, which body is referring to? Uh, the council on aging, the assistant to the director. No, I mean, which board? The, the... Oh, the the personnel board. Oh, okay. The council on aging, uh, when they when the council on aging came in for this position change that she wanted this assistant to the director, evidently now her board's giving her some, a little bit of a hard time. Oh, about her, it. her board, her board, her board is oh, yeah. okay, right? Yeah, yeah, so this okay. may get changed and I may come back to you. I think their board meets on April 11th, so she may come back to me on this, but we can we can approve this as is. It may get amended on town meeting floor. Okay, motion to recommend. Okay. Uh, this is article 33. Yes. Yeah, somebody should point out that there's probably an error uh, when it comes to hours under item two and item three, it says minus 20. But that's um, what Sal makes money, Buzzy. Group two. Oh, no, hours, uh, hours are, yeah, under 20, le less than 20 hours. Less than 20. Okay. Right. I'm glad that's I. The, yeah, that's what that means. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe it 20. should be a little signed well, in V. It's convoluted. I, Buzzy's right. It says two hours and minus 20. Maybe it goes the other way around, but it needs to be clarified. Yeah, and the way the typing came out on, on even on my copy, they don't all the headings don't line up. So right. it's yeah, it's group two. The two is for the group. The okay. hours are minus twenty. There is no pay okay. scale listed. Okay, that will make sense. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so you looked at it. <clears throat> so it's it's less than twenty hours. Yes, under twenty hours. Yeah. Okay, I'd prefer if there were a little less than symbol. Okay. Um, yeah. 
All right, I'll um, I'll send that to him. So are we approving it, and then they'll just make a little typo correction? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So moved with the corrections. Second. Right. Roll call: Buzzy. Aye. Hugh. Aye. Gary. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Zach. Aye. And Karen. Aye. And Article 34 is to fund the stabilization uh, well, fund. So we don't, don't know what that is. We, we just, it's blank, so I don't see how we can. We see. know the number. So we, we, we already scheduled out our free cash. And so we proposed the balance of free cash, which was 200000 in this number. Oh, okay. okay. Have, we put, have we put anything to, into OPEP? We did $100,000. Yeah. That doesn't need a warrant article? That's on the, in the budget. Oh, that's put that okay. That's in the budget. Yeah, okay. we won't necessarily have a warrant article for it. Right, right. So, okay. so do we have to do this conditional on approval of the budget as submitted? No, we can put the two hundred thousand in, and if it changes because someone wanted more money and it gets approved, then we can amend the amount on town meeting right. floor. Right. right. Yeah, remember the motion is what actually works in comparing, I mean, uh, Cindy's right. Okay. Yep, and that was our, we scheduled out all of the free cash and we used it all up this year, the whole $2.1 and that was putting the $200,000 into the, into the stabilization. So motion to so $200,000. Second. Buzzy? Aye. Hugh? Aye. Gary? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Zach? Aye. And Karen? Aye. We made it through. Woo. You know, just as a side note, I'm still amazed that the town of Somerset paid for a $15 million library out of free cash. Oh. Huh. Most communities, most communities fund most of the stable, most of the capital items out of free cash, into the tune of multi million dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember, we go, Somerset, we go there with our pockets turned inside out. <laughs> Somerset has been a prize cow after they lost Montauk, etc. Yeah. Yeah. They flooded them with money to make up for the loss of taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, All right, so we're going to, uh, just to recap, so I think we're going to close ourselves out. It's 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we want to go through the Warren articles one more time. No, no, we did a good job, though. With we'll that. do the override again. We did a pretty fantastic job getting through all of them, so uh, I think it was pretty productive. So, um, so we'll work with Jim, and then as soon as... Um, you know, and Gary, if you have any other thoughts on, you know, if anybody has any other thoughts on scenarios, just put them down and then we can combine them all together. So, yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I, get, I understand the point you were trying to make before, Karen, with the um, with the budgets. I mean, it, it's going to be difficult because, you know, it's going to probably only get us to a level playing field. We're going to be. And the, the issue is we've used free cash in these budgets. And, and that's really what I think is really. The problem with all this, yeah, that's, that, that's what's going to cause these structural deficits to get larger. Yes, right. that's why we can't spend all of whatever. Yeah. If, if the if the appropriation were three million, we can't spend the whole three million because we know next year we have to replace, replenish that petty cash. That, yeah, that we got to be. Cash. Yeah, we got to be very careful how we do this. Right. It's, that's it's, why we can't. That's why the million, million, million works very well because, you yeah. you know, the next year. The million now is two million, and now you can use that money to to replenish the the free cash hole. Yeah, I was it, an advocate for the three million, but I I mean I changed my mind after thinking of it. Well, the only way you could do it is if you did the three million in year one, you'd really have to put it either in a stabilization or you know do something else with it, so not spend it. You can't incur right. expenses. You have to hold it. Right. So you, you can't, can't do the hole. You can, right. but you, you know you. You'd have to put it in stabilization or something like that. Yeah, you, you have to cap the expenses. You, yeah, yeah. Right. You can't. You yes. can't say, "Oh, we've got all of this money," because yes. then mm -hmm. it just right. compounds itself. Right. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's why I mean, the use of, of free cash was 
I mean, three years ago, it was it was it was bad. We right. continued it last year under pressure. And again this year. And right. this year, you know, and, I, it, it's bad. Right. And the same thing, Gary, like what we were talking about, where even, you know, if it were three million in the first year and then it say, you know, say you put us some aside to cover the free cash hole that has to be filled. That's a lot of spending that's going to get done on the quickly. Right. So you, we got to be thoughtful about what we, we're spending. Right. You're leaving us, Buzzy. I am. I'm going to go eat dinner. <laughs> oh, geez. Good night, Buzzy. Good night. So, you know, you've got to be thoughtful and have a plan of what's the best use. And so by slowing slowing down the million, million, million kind of forces that to be thinking strategically what what's next, you know, what's what's coming. Yeah. So, okay, well, we'll put different, you know, Jim will put different scenarios together. So, um, and I guarantee we'll next year we're going to be in the very same mm -hmm. position we are right now. It's going to be last minute. It's going to be, there are going to be changes that people are going to want up until the very edge of when we have to approve these things. And on that note, I move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I will take that as a roll Second. call and move, Gary. Yes. <laughs> Hugh. Aye. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Zach, great job, Zach. Aye. Um, and Karen, I thank you, everyone. We'll get some agendas posted for Monday and Wednesday. Good thank night. you.